the interesting thing is it's, it's gone on to prove it's one of, its, one of the best tanks in the world, if not the best at the moment. Just showing off there, it uh, puts its diesel fuel on the hot ex exhaust of the vehicle and that creates that smoke screen. Um, it means it can create its own smoke screen anyway. It doesn't actually have to fire off its smoke dischargers. And uh, again, you need a nice big thick smoke screen to hide yourself again if the enemies pick you up. He's turning his turret there. Challenger 2 has what they call a hunter-killer system. The commander up in the, tu in the turret, um, he's the one that's actually looking for the targets with his sight. He has a computer that he can dot on his screen where the target is. And the gunner who's sitting in front of him will then go to that target, do the final aiming of the gun and fire. And so the commander can be picking up a number of targets, putting them in the, uh, the computer, and, uh, and the command can also override the gunner. If a, one target becomes more threatening, he can get the gunner to pick up that target sooner rather than later. It's a very, very effective system, and it makes the Challenger 2 as a tank killer um, probably the best one in the world at the moment. Again, he's showing off his uh, diesel on the exhaust there, showing the sort of smoke screen he could make. Again, hiding himself from any enemy, he'd back into that, disappear, find another position to come forward. Challenger 2's got a four-man crew, three of them in the turret. You've got the commander, the driver, and the, sorry, the commander, the loader, and the gunner. Uh, still, the gun is manually loaded, uh, but in the future, it looked like we're going to change the big 120 millimeter gun we've got on this tank into what they call a smoothbore gun. It'll be the same size, 120 millimeter, but as most of the other NATO armies use smoothbore ammunition, uh, it means commonality of ammunition, means we don't have to go to the uh, Belgians every time to buy our ammunition. So we can uh, use it, or any a country's 120 ammunition as a smoothbore, um, and it'll probably have a, a semi-automated loading system. Challenger 2 is fitted with the British invention, what they call Chobham armour. This was a, a very secret, uh, still technically top secret, British invention from back in the 1960s, uh, developed by British scientists up at the uh, Chobham Research Establishment. It's basically, it's a laminate armour. It's layers of rubber, ceramic, all sorts of things put together. The only problem is they can't bend it. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of modern British tanks or modern British vehicles have these very flat, faceted surfaces. Um, underneath that skin of the vehicle you're looking at there, that's where the uh, Chobham armour is. And uh, the skin of the vehicle can actually be taken off and the armour upgraded. At the moment, we're up to what they call Dorchester Level 2 um, on the uh, current Challenger 2s when they go into service. And again, as I mentioned with those earlier vehicles, they add a lot of armour on packs on the outside of the vehicle when it's going on operations. Um, we've also started adding reactive armour to the outside of the vehicles. That's armour that explodes when it hits to force the round or to force the impact away from the vehicle. Chobham armour is what they call a passive armour. It doesn't actually do anything, but it is tremendously effective in stopping incoming rounds. Um, and weight for weight, it's much, much better than having uh, the equivalent sort of amount of steel on the vehicle. On the back of the turret, there's uh, what they call the turret bustle, the rear piece. Um, that contains the NBC equipment, so nuclear, biological, and chemical warfare equipment. It basically it filters the air coming into the vehicle when it's closed down. It overpressurizes the inside of the vehicle so the crew is safe uh, if there's a chemical warfare attack, um, so nothing can get in inside the vehicle. It's a whopping great 1,200 horsepower Cummings diesel engine in the back, very, very powerful, and it can uh, speed the uh, Challenger 2 around the battlefield at a fair old lick. Um, with all the add-ons that they've been adding, obviously the weight of Challenger has gone up from its original weight, um, but this is pretty much how you'll see the vehicle when it's in training or when it's around here at Bovington or down at the, the gunnery ranges. When it heads off, um, they're coming back really at the moment from Iraq, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Challenger 2 sometime heading off to Afghanistan. And when it does go into combat situations, it will have all that extra armor added to it. Um, 
also have what they call ECM equipment added. That's all the electronic countermeasures equipment so that uh, you get all these very clever little boxes. And the idea there is so we can detect if there's any mines in the side of the roads.